Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. From the platform of Sayyid Academy of Learning, I am back with one of the most important lectures in the field of forensic science and criminology and that is about the forensic fingerprints. So this lecture is very very important to know about it. Be with me till the end of this video and do subscribe my channel. So in this lecture we will study about the fingerprint external structure of fingerprint, what is the internal structure of fingerprint, what are the types of fingerprints, principles of fingerprints, what are the different patterns of fingerprints, what is the role of fingerprints in forensic criminal investigation, and last but not the least, fingerprint examination at the lab. And at the end, you will have to give an assessment quiz and this quiz is very important for you in order to know about yourself and how much did you learn from this lecture. So to know about all these stuff and material regarding forensic fingerprints, watch my video till the end of this lecture. So let's start. Fingerprints. Fingerprint is the impression left upon any surface with which the finger comes in contact under pressure. So it means that when you put your finger on a kind of source and it takes your finger impression, that is basically fingerprint. Sometimes it is visible, sometimes it is not visible. It depends upon the surface. We will know about it and I will teach you about these visible and invisible fingerprints as well in the upcoming slides. Fingerprinting is the major source of personal identification and is used for the determination of two individuals. And yeah, fingerprints are unique and it is used in order to differentiate among the people because that is quite apparent towards everyone that fingerprints are unique completely and no two fingers have identical fingerprint impression. So yeah, it is also used as a source of identification. So now let's know about the external structure of fingerprints. That is very important and that is very simple. There is no need to be confused. It's very simple and straightforward. First of all, we have a ridge, singular or ridges, plural. So look at the picture carefully. Ridges are the dark lines in the fingerprint. So the lines which you are having on your finger uh, print, these lines are called ridges. Now we do have valleys. So valleys are the white area between the ridges that whenever you are seeing any space between your uh, ridges that is called valley basically. You can also look it from the picture which has been labeled as well as a valley. The space between the ridges that is called valley. So look at the picture you can see the white area between the ridges that is called valley. And the third thing is core. Look at the picture. It has been leveled. The center of the fingerprint is called core and that is in front of you. And now last but not the least, another major area of fingerprint is delta. Delta is a kind of triangular area where ridges diverge. So look at the picture that is called delta and delta has a massive importance in order to recognize the pattern of a fingerprint as well as it is used in the comparison of fingerprints as well. So delta is the triangular area where which is diverse and you can see the picture clearly as delta has been labeled on the picture. Now I'm going to show another clear picture of external structure of fingerprint and that is in front of you. So now you can see clearly the ridge, the dark lines, the black lines on your fingerprint impression, that is ridge. The space between the black lines, it means the space between the ridges is called valley. The main and center point of your fingerprint, that is called core. And the triangular shape, look the picture and look at the delta. Here the delta is the kind of triangular shape and that has been diverted. So when the ridges diverse, that is called delta. Now let's know about the internal structure of fingerprints. So the internal structure of fingerprint as well as of the skin is quite same. Uh, there are three layers in a skin or in a fingerprint skin. That is the epidermis, the dermis as well as and hypodermis. The outermost layer of skin provides a waterproof barrier and creates our skin tone. 
that is the epidermis layer so it is quite visible the layer which is above on the surface or our finger that is called the epidermis dermis is beneath the epidermis it contains tough connective tissues hair follicles and sweat glands so that is dermis you can clearly see it from the diagram and the third one is hypodermis the hypodermis is a subcutaneous tissue that is made of fat and connective tissues you can clearly see it from the diagram first we have the epidermis layer and then beneath the epidermis we do have dermis layer and then we are having hypodermis layer now let's know about the important thing in these layers which has a vital role in order to bring some changes in the angle of the fingerprints or to make it enlarge or distinguished and that is about the dermal papillae dermal papillae separates the dermis and epidermis layer and determines the types of the rich pattern once this layer develops in the fetus it remains unchanged except for enlarging during growth human's fingerprints are determined by the papillae layer in order to alter your prints you must damage through the first layer of the skin and eventually you become more distinguished and suspicious in a simple way it means that your fingerprints and the angles of the fingerprints can be changed even it get enlarged because of growth but it cannot be changed it will remain unchanged during the whole life but as far as dermal papillae is concerned there is a layer which comes between the dermis and hypodermis and once it get altered or damaged so it can change the angle of that particular fingerprint but again it is not so much effective because you will have the rest of the other fingers as well and you cannot change or damage all of the dermal papillae of your fingerprints because eventually you will become a kind of suspicious person so there is not commonly effective use of the criminals in order to dodge the law enforcement practitioners now let's know about another important module of this lecture and that is about the types of fingerprints so we have three basic types of fingerprints latin print pattern print and plastic print so let's know about it one by one what is latin print latin print are invisible print and it has an important role in the forensic science a fingerprint that is not apparent to the eye but can be made visible by using light chemicals or powders so latent prints are those prints which has been sticked on the surface but it cannot be seen on the eye but due to different chemicals and powders as well as on light it becomes visible and then a forensic expert preserved that through tape or other material or with photography and then transport it to the forensic lab in order to do comparison so that is latent print latent prints formation it means how latent prints form how latent prints stick to a surface because it is not visible by the naked eyes so let's know about the formation of latent prints your skin has openings called pores and there are the location of perspiration of sweat and body oils when you make contact with a surface your body oil stick to a surface in the shape of your fingerprints so prints left with this technique at a crime scene are called latin prints so it's mean that when such kind of fingerprints left on a crime scene are on the surface so it is because of the perspiration of sweat and our body oils now second type of fingerprint is pattern print pattern print means visible print it is completely visible with the naked eyes a print that is visible and may not require further development obviously if it is visible so there is no need to develop it more so it may be deposited on an object in a contaminant such as ink blood grease dirt etc so yeah when uh, the surface is dirty or when the surface is having ink or blood or whenever a criminal or some other person fingerprints are dirty with dirt with grease with ink blood or some other kind of stuff like paint so obviously then the fingerprints become visible and then the forensic expert collect it through tape or with photography and finally the third type of fingerprint is plastic print 
So let's know about what is plastic print. When a finger ridges, impression left on a soft material like putty, wax, soap or dust, etc. and leave a three-dimensional mark. So that is called plastic print. In plastic print, the whole source is taken to a lab for examining and can be taken through photography as well because whenever photography takes place of such kind of fingerprints, then with the help of that particular forensic photography, a disputed fingerprint can be compared with the specimen. And now let's know about that why we use fingerprints. So obviously that why we use fingerprints in the criminal investigation, in the forensic investigation, in the criminal justice system in order to restore the justice by the court of law. So fingerprints can be used for individualization and identification. And yeah, that is used for identification of a person. Because fingerprints are unique. Unique means that no two persons are having the same fingerprints. They are unique. So if it is taken from a crime scene and if the disputed fingerprint which has been taken from a crime scene and if the specimen or other kinds of fingerprints have been taken by the police officers and if compared with each other and it get a conclusive result and it get compared. So obviously from a simple fingerprints the criminals can be convicted and he cannot even deny from the fingerprints because it is quite apparent towards everyone and no two individuals are having the same fingerprints. They are permanent and they are inimitable. And now let's know about that when fingerprints develop in human beings. So friction ridges or fingerprints develop their unique form in the fetus between 4 to 5 months of the fetal development. Now let's know about another important module of this presentation and that is about the principles of fingerprints. So there are three basic principles of fingerprints which is in front of you. The first and basic principle of fingerprint is that a fingerprint is an individual characteristic. No two fingers have yet been found to possess identical rich characteristics, even twins. So that is the important principle of fingerprints that no two fingers, even of a single person, are having identical finger ridges. Even if they are twins, it will be different. The second principle is that a fingerprint will remain unchanged during an individual's lifetime. Therefore, it got a massive importance in the criminal justice system, just like DNA. But as far as DNA is concerned, so that is quite complicated and expensive. But as far as fingerprint is concerned, so that is very easy, not even expensive, and there is no difficulty in the records of fingerprints as well. And the third principle of fingerprint is that fingerprints have general rich patterns that permit them to be systematically classified. So now the third principle is giving the idea of the fingerprints patterns that yes, it is fact that no two fingerprints are similar or having same identical characteristics, but fingerprints might have similar patterns as well. And this is the third principle. So now we will also study about the patterns of fingerprints. So there are three types of patterns of fingerprints, loops, whorls and arch. So look at the loops. That is the picture which is in front of you. That is one of the patterns of fingerprints and that is called loops. Loop consists of one or more free recurving ridges. So look at the red curving ridges. That is a kind of loop that it will have one or more free recurving ridges and one delta as we have studied before in the early uh, stage of this lecture the delta is having a triangular shape which diverts the ridges. So loop will always have one delta. If it has one delta it will be loop. Whenever a forensic fingerprint is examining a fingerprint and he finds just one delta so it's been that it is loop pattern. So loop consists of one or more free recurving ridges and one delta. Now let's know about another pattern and that is called whirl. So whirl consists of one or more free recurving ridges and two deltas. So look at the recurving ridges that is uh, quite apparent and now it will have two deltas. 
So whenever a fingerprint pattern is having two deltas, it will be considered as a world pattern. And yeah, it is also having recurving ridges. And last but not the least, the third pattern of fingerprint is arch. So it is made up of ridges lying one above the other in a general arching formation. And the picture is in front of you. And the important thing about arch is it has no delta. So whenever a fingerprint pattern is not having a delta and it is having such kind of finger ridges pattern, it will be considered as arch. So now let me take a short and simple assessment from you people that do you know about these three patterns so just pause the video and try to identify that in these three which one will be world which one will be arch and which one will be loo so pause the video for a short time and then resume it and then i will show you the answer as well So yeah, these are the answers. So I hope you might have assessed yourself. So fingerprints patterns in the population. So that is very informative and a kind of general knowledge as well. That in all over the world, 60 to 65 percent of the population are having loop pattern in their fingerprints. 30 to 35 percent of the population are having world pattern in their fingerprints, and just 5% of the population are having arch pattern in their fingerprints. So, so I hope so that now you are also able to identify your pattern. Just try to take some ink on your thumb impression and put it on a kind of page or some other surface and try to identify about the deltas and the patterns so you can identify your finger ridges patterns as well. Now generally let's know about the fingerprints and its role in the forensic criminal investigation. So forensic science is the application of science to those criminal and civil laws that are enforced by police agencies in the criminal justice system. Forensic science plays a vital role in the discipline of criminology, particularly in the criminal justice system, by providing scientifically based information through analysis of physical evidence, that is fingerprints, firearms as an evidence, etc. During investigation, physical evidence is collected from crime scene or from a person, analyzed in a laboratory, where the experts form a forensic opinion. Human can lie, forget in the court of the law, and can be absent from the crime scene, but physical evidence just like fingerprints are always present at the crime scene as a silent witness. Well-qualified and properly trained scientists with their knowledge and skills make this silent witness speak in the court of law, as it is quite apparent that fingerprints are unique and no two fingers have same fingerprints, so criminals can be traced from his fingerprints and he or she cannot even deny. Now let's know about the forensic examination of fingerprints at forensic lab that how the forensic expert or the law enforcement practitioner collected the fingerprints from the scene of the occurrence or from other sources at the crime scene and then they transport it to the forensic lab and then the police collect the specimen of the fingerprints from the suspicious and then they examine the disputed fingerprints with the specimen of the suspect in order to bring a conclusion before a court of law in order to restore a justice. So at forensic lab, what forensic experts do with the fingerprints? So fingerprint section of forensic lab plays a vital role in the forensic examination of fingerprints in course of criminal investigation. Forensic scientists compare fingerprint impressions in both criminal and civil cases to trace out the offender in order to compare the disputed fingerprints with the specimen. Here it get mentioned criminal as well as civil case. So a criminal case is quite apparent like in a murder case or a court case or a robbery case. But in civil case, if for example there is a dispute of a land or if there is a dispute of other kind of um, business and they have put their finger impressions on a stamp paper so that is the kind of civil case and then the court can take help from the forensic lab in order to determine the fingerprint impressions. A part of that, experts develop and process the latent prints, lift the fingerprints from the scene of occurrence in order to do comparison 
and they also make a criminal records on the basis of fingerprints. So forensic lab is also playing a crucial role in order to examine the fingerprints. So these were all about the forensic fingerprints and these were very important module for the students of forensic science and criminology as well as for law as well as for the general population to know about the facts of fingerprints because each and every person are having fingers and fingerprints. So now I'm going to take a short quiz from you people in order to do some assessment and it is very important. So this is a kind of quiz. So just pause the video for a short time, read these objectives, try to give the answers and then resume the video and try to know about the correct answers. So you will know about the correct answers as well as about the wrong answer and you can also give marks to yourself out of 10. So these are 10 objectives. So now it's up to you that how much marks you got. If you get 10 out of 10, so that is outstanding from my side. And if you do a little bit mistakes, so that's okay try to learn it again and again that's fine okay because practice makes man's perfect so i hope you got this lecture regarding forensic fingerprints in a very good manner and if you people are still having any confusion and any ambiguity regarding fingerprints and if you want to ask some more questions in fingerprints so you can ask me question in the below comment section as well and if you people didn't subscribe my channel yet so do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon as well in order to get notification for the upcoming lectures. So thank you very much. Stay safe. Stay blessed.